Welcome to Cells to Symptoms, a case-based way of learning pathology. In this video, we're going to be finding out about tissue alterations and particularly dysplasia. Dysplasia is a term that's usually applied to an epithelium, which describes a disordered maturation. It's important to understand dysplasia because it potentially is a pre-malignant condition. Let's now think about how this concept of dysplasia links to the gastrointestinal tract. Let's now redraw a normal epithelium and I'm putting a bit of a glandular element into this epithelium. The epithelial cells and nuclei in this epithelium are relatively uniform. Here's the lining basement membrane. And within this epithelium, we can see at the base of a crypt here, there are what we sometimes refer to as stem cells, which then give rise to the epithelial cells, which can be lost towards the surface. And there's a normal maturation process which is occurring within this epithelium. Let's now draw a dysplastic epithelium. In dysplasia, what we see is an irregularity of the epithelial cells with relatively large nuclei compared to the cytoplasm of the cell, so an increase in nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, and there's a loss of the normal maturation. This abnormal epithelium tends to be thrown up then into folds because it outgrows the local anatomical constraints, as it were, and often this then is manifest as a polyp. You'll remember that the epithelium also shows crowding of the nuclei, which pile up on top of each other, known as stratification. So here then is our dysplastic epithelium thrown up into this polyp-like structure with an abnormal maturation of the epithelial cells. And critically, you remember that the basement membrane remained intact. Let's consider now the next stage in this process, which is that the dysplasia may vary in degree, and we talk sometimes about low-grade or high-grade dysplasia. But eventually, the dysplasia may become so severe that some of these cells now develop the potential to invade beneath the basement membrane and become invasive. This then is invasive malignancy. In the context of the gastrointestinal tract, this overgrowth of the epithelium forming a polyp is sometimes referred to as an adenomatous polyp. Again, within the gastrointestinal tract, we recognize the so-called adenoma carcinoma sequence, which is simply a manifestation of the fact that the dysplastic adenomatous polyp may progress to become invasive carcinoma. So manifestations of this pathology in the gastrointestinal tract may include altered bowel habit and bleeding. These in turn are a reflection of the irritant effect of the polyp, perhaps just because of mechanical distortion, and the fact that the polyp may ulcerate, leading to bleeding. For the patient, this blood loss may eventually lead to an anemia and general tiredness, and these are important symptoms that may require further investigation. At an investigation, an endoscopy may reveal a polypoid lesion, which may either be biopsied or, if possible, removed in its entirety. In conclusion, then, we've discussed adenomatous polyps of the large bowel as an example of epithelial dysplasia, and this is one of a number of possible tissue alterations. We've discussed the importance of dysplasia and thought about its clinical manifestations and how, if left untreated, it can progress to advanced malignancy. Thank you for visiting Cells to Symptoms. We hope you found this video both interesting and informative.